good morning students yesterday i explained the main features of perfect communication i already explained that there are different types of markets and one category is perfect communication so today i am going to explain another type of market that is called monopoly 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 really that mono means a single that let us derive from a greek word mono means single so monopoly the main what we can see what are the main features of monopoly what is the nature of demand curve facing under monopoly so we can see what is total revenue what is average revenue what is marginal revenue what is price etc i can see first you can see what are the main features of monopoly first feature is that there is only one seller yesterday we saw that the perfect communication under under perfect communication we already understood that there are large number of buyers and sellers present in the market but competition will cease to exist when there is only one buyer or producer or seller in the market or when there are large number of if there are large number of producers they have making an agreement about their price so competition will cease to exist or competition will be stopped then there is only one producer or seller in the market we can see what are the main features of this monopoly first one is that there is only one seller or producer in the market there is only one seller or producer in the market there is only one seller or producer in the market it means that others cannot influence the market the entire product comes from a single seller or a producer the entire product comes from a single seller or producer that is the first feature of this monopoly there is only one seller or producer in the market second one is that there is no close substitute for the product there is no close substitute for the product there is no cost substitute for the product it means that the entire product comes from a single seller or producer the entire product comes from a single seller or producer so we can sir, say that there is no cost substitute and we can take some example uh, some um, companies some drug manufacturing company or some of the pharmaceuticals they sometimes there may be only one single producer who is producing a particular tablet or medicine you can say it is a monopoly it is a private monopoly monopoly you can divide into uh, private and the government also for example in the case of this government monopoly railway a railway is a, a public monopoly railway completely government undertaking others are not entering in the same way atomic defense atomic research defense defense equipment all these things are then water supply electricity electricity all these are examples of monopoly but it is under the category of government monopoly government monopoly so there are private monopoly and government monopoly here first feature is that there is only one seller or producer in the market second one is that there is no close substitute for the product it means that the entire product comes from a single seller or a producer or a manufacturer we can say 
there is no close substitute for the product next one is that it monopolist is a price maker but not a price taker what is the meaning of this one i will explain means is a price maker it mean how is making price in the beginning i told that since he is the sole producer or since he is only one seller he can fix any price with the likes whatever may be the price he can fix but at the same time he is not a price taker who is price taker that is consumer is the ultimate authority consumer if the monopolist fixes a high price it is taken or it should be taken or it should be accepted by the consumer only so monopolist is a price maker but not a price taker the price taker is consumer or people they will decide whether they should accept whether they should take that product or not so we are saying that monopolist is only a price maker but not a price taker that is next feature of this monopoly next one is that there is no entry there is no entry there is no entry in the firm for example uh, defense uh, armaments or atomic energy it is produced by the government only other other entrepreneurs cannot enter in this field in the same way really i told you really government so it is owned by government central government others cannot run really till this date future we cannot see what will happen anyway till this date it is under the monopoly of government only so other individual person other individual entrepreneurs or businessmen cannot enter in this field so entry there is a there is a great barrier or there is great uh, difficulty to enter in this field there is no entry in this field next one is like the na nature of knowledge or nature of the market or knowledge of the market knowledge of the market knowledge of the market It means that the, the monopolist is quite aware that at what price he can <coughs> sell his commodity. What is the <coughs> nature of market? What is the demand of the market? Everything he can understand. So he is quite aware. He is quite aware about the condition of the market, about the price, and moreover about the demand of the market. He is quite aware. He has complete knowledge. Or he has perfect knowledge about the market condition. That is another thing. next one is that the nature of a demand curve we can see what is the nature of the demand curve under monopoly this i am going to draw once more there is only one seller that is first feature next there is no close substitute for the product it means that the entire product comes from a single seller next price maker monopolist is only a price maker not a price taker next one there is no entry in the firm next some perfect knowledge of the market the monopolist has complete knowledge of perfect knowledge of the market condition
faces a downward sloping demand curve. It falls from left to right. The monopolist faces a downward sloping demand curve. It faces from left to right. It is inversely related to price. It is inversely related to price. We can see how it is happening. Here for example, if the price is OP, the quantity demanded is OQ. When the price falls from OP to OP1, the quantity demanded increases from OQ to OQ1. It is so that when the price is increased, the quantity sold or the quantity demanded is reduced and vice versa. If the price is low, the quantity demanded will be high and vice versa. That is another thing. The monopolist faces a downward sloping demand curve or if average revenue curve is a or price is downward sloping curve. DD or AR we can say revenue curve. This is the revenue curve. So he faces a downward sloping demand curve. That is we saw. But yesterday we saw that in other case under perfect competition it is a horizontal line parallel to parallel to OX axis. Yesterday we saw, we studied that under perfect competition the AR curve is a horizontal line parallel to OX axis. This is another feature. Downward sloping demand curve. Next one is that is that price discrimination may be happen or uniform. It can make either price discrimination or it can fix a uniform price. Price discrimination or uniform price. It can fix a price, either a price discrimination or it can fix a uniform price. For example, I saw that I already explained that electricity is a monopolist government. When they are supplying, when they are giving electricity to industrial purposes, they will charge a higher rate than the domestic purpose. They may charge a low rate from the people or they may charge a low rate for domestic use. But at the same time, they may charge a high price for industrial purpose or business purpose. So we can see some discrimination there. A higher charge is demanded from business people or for industrial purpose. But at the same time, they are charging only a lower price from the domestic purpose. We can say that thing. Electricity. For, a, for a, as an example, we can say electricity. So discrimination, the monopolist can make either discriminatory price policy or uniform price policy. It depends upon his likes and dislikes. Let's see. So we saw that is the nature total what are the main features of this monopoly totally I already explained. When it's one seller, next no cross substitute for the product, then price maker, monopolist is a price maker, not a price taker. There is no entry, there is great difficulty to enter in this field easily because for I have already mentioned an example of electricity. It is completely owned by the government, so private cannot enter. That's another thing. So these are the main features. Next we can see uh, what is the uh, average revenue and what is the total revenue and what is the marginal revenue. I will just uh, draw a schedule. I will, I will draw a schedule. Before that, before drawing that schedule, 
And we have to understand the, what is the market demand is, what is the individual demand. Individual, de individual demand is in, in a market, there are different individuals. There are different individuals in a market. So each has its own demand curve. So each person will demand. But we will get a market demand after the summation of that individual's demand. After the summation of individual's demand, we will get a market demand. We will get a market demand of a monopolist after summing or after adding the individual individual demand of all the people in the market. That is market demand. For example, uh, one, two, there are four patients or there are hundred people in a hundred patients in a market. Each has their own demand curve. We are adding all their demand, all their demand. After that, we will get a market demand, total demand of the different patients. That is called as market demand. Next, I will show you what is total revenue. What is total revenue? What is price? Revenue, yesterday I told you. When a product is sold and when he is getting money by selling a product, it is called as revenue. So we can see what is revenue. For example, we can see that I have drawn some columns. First one is just the quantity produced by the monopolist. Quantity produced and price. This is quantity produced. This is you can say price. Price. This is total revenue. We can say that is total revenue. Then average revenue and marginal revenue. Yeah. Then MR. For example. Here you see quantity produced is zero. Quantity produced is zero. So can say for example, right? So quantity sold into price that is its total revenue. Quantity sold into quantity sold into price is called total revenue. For example, ten in zero is equal to zero only. Then, then as we can see, from he produces one unit, one unit at that time, 9.5, his price is 9, he fixes a price at the rate of 9.5 for one unit. So, you can say that price into, price into quantity, that is his PR. Yeah, total revenue. Here, this 10 into 0 is 0. Here we can see 9.5 into 1. 9.5 into 1 unit is equal to 9.5 is the PR, 9.5. Next we can see this is 9. E produces 2 units. 2 E sells 2 units or he produces 2 units but he fixes a price for rupees 9 so 9 into 2 is equal to 18 again he fixes or he produces 3 units 3 units at that time he sells his product at 8.5 8 8.5 he fixes 8.5 so totally we can say this 3 into 8.5 is equal to 25.5. 3 into 8.5, 25.5. Next, if it says 4, 
at the price of eight rupees. The producer four units at the price of eight. So total revenue will be four into eight. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Next, the e producer five units. So e again reduces its price seven point five. Seven point seven years. E reduces its price at seven point five. So here comes the thirty. Seven point five. For example, seven point five into five. Thirty-seven point five. So it is so that here we can see average revenue and marginal revenue. But again, I am saying that this P into Q, the total revenue, can be calculated by multiplying P into Q. Price into quantity sold. We will get an equation. P R is equal to P into P into Q. P into Q is P R or total revenue. Price per unit into quantity. Price into quantity sold. We should multiply price into quantity sold. So we will get a total revenue. P into Q is equal to P R. Here I am just explain that one unit is sold at the price of nine point five. So nine point five into one is equal to nine point five. Now second one you can see. Two price quantity, two unit is produced at the price of nine rupees. Two into nine is equal to eighteen. Two into nine is equal to eighteen. Next one three into eight point five. That is equal to eight point five into three twenty five point five. Next we can see five into seven point five thirty seven point five. That is the total revenue. Total revenue. Next, we can see what is the average revenue. Average revenue can be calculated. First, the total revenue divided by the number of units produced. Yesterday also, we I already explained. Average revenue can be calculated by dividing the total revenue by the number of units produced. Here, here we can see first unit is getting total revenue of 9.5 rupees. Total revenue is 9.5, but unit of output produced is one 9.5. Five divided by one is equal to nine point five. Is the it's a nine point five? That is the average revenue. Total revenue divided by number of units produced is called the average revenue. Nine point five. You will get second case. You can take second case. You can take here. Total revenue is eighteen rupees. The unit number of units produced is two. So, how we can calculate total revenue divided by number of units produced? Eighteen divided by two is equal to nine. Eighteen divided by two is equal to nine. Nine rupees. Next, twenty-five point five. That's next one. Total revenue twenty-five point five divided by three. Twenty-five point five divided by Twenty-five point five divided by three is equal to eight point five. Eight point five you will get eight point five. Next here you see thirty-two rupees. Total revenue thirty-two. Number of units produced is four. So how we can calculate it? Thirty-two divided by four is equal to thirty-two divided by four is equal to eight. Eight rupees. Eight rupees. That also you saw. Next we can see thirty-seven point five is here. Thirty-seven point five divided by five. Thirty-seven point five divided by five. Seven point five. You will get seven point five. So up to this, I have already explained. Again, up to this point. First, nine point five. Nine point five is the price. Price nine point five. So total value nine point five into one. Nine point five into one, nine point five. Next, guess the nine rupees. Nine into two, eighteen. Next, eight point five into three, twenty-five point five. Eight into four, thirty-two. Seven point five, five. So here, average revenue. How we will can calculate average revenue? How we will calculate average revenue? Average revenue can can be calculated by dividing the total revenue. Dividing the total revenue. Are they? Number of units produced 
we can we should divide total revenue with number of units for example 9.5 divided by 1 is equal to 9.5 here 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9 next 25.5 divided by 3 is equal to 8.5 next 32 divided by 4 is equal to 8 next 37.5 is equal to 7.5 that is the average revenue average revenue average revenue total revenue then uh, price uh, you understood up to this point, up to this unit. Next you can see marginal revenue. What is marginal revenue? Marginal revenue is the addition to total revenue. Understood? Addition to total revenue is called as marginal revenue. That's what I told you. Addition to total revenue. For example, here, 9.5 is first. 9.5 is first. But second unit, you can see. Second unit, see. What is it in? What is the addition? Addition to total revenue. What is the addition to total revenue? That is called as this marginal revenue. Understood? Addition to total revenue. Here, we saw that addition to total revenue is, first, firstly you can see that, again, TR is firstly 9.5, second 18, 9.5 TSO. Then, total Addition to total revenue, you can see what is it? What is the difference between these two? That means 8.5. 8.5 is here. 8.5. 8.5 is here. Next, here 7.5. Difference between these two. 7.5. Next, next one is 6.5. 6.5 is another difference. So we saw. The addition to total revenue is called as marginal revenue. When we are uh, producing more and more commodity, we can deduct addition. How much revenue is made by selling last unit? This is called as uh, marginal revenue. You can see uh, what is the curve of this demand curve. You can see you can draw these things with the help of a diagram. Total revenue, marginal revenue, and average revenue. You can see you can see with the help of a diagram. Y x O y. This is price. This is price of the average revenue, total revenue, marginal revenue can see. Here output. Here. For example, I told you. This is only an example. Only, this is only an example. This, you can see total revenue. You can see total revenue. This can be total revenue. Represent. Yx, we have taken the yx axis, we have taken output and in the y axis, we have seen yeah, TR total revenue, average revenue, market revenue. Here, this total revenue curve, you know, it is an upward up to this uh, uh, 10, 10 units. Here, I have shown that charge diagram, I have shown that the schedule, schedule I have shown you, I have explained. Even though it is increasing, but gradually after 10 units, this is an example only, after 10 units, it is declining revenue, total revenue is declining. It is called an inverted vertical parabola it is, you can say that it is inverted vertical parabola it is, called, it is called as or that equation is called as inverted vertical parabola
Here we can see that firstly the total, total revenue is uh, rising upward, but uh, gradually it is dropping, it is declining. That means it shows that when, when the producer is producing more and more units of product, it, supply will be increased, uh, so naturally there will be a decline in the price. See, so when in the beginning the price or its revenue will be very high, but when he is producing more and more units of commodity and when he is uh, selling more and more units of his product, uh, it is only natural that uh, there will be a decline in his total revenue. It is shows like this. This total revenue is declining. In the initial stage, it is rising upward, but gradually it is going downward. It is called as inverted vertical parabola. You can see here output, average revenue, uh, then marginal revenue, and the total revenue is uh, shown here. So, we have already explained what is the nature of this, what are the main features of this monopoly, uh, what is the, how the um, total revenue curve is, uh, how a monopoly is the face of the total revenue curve, what is the shape and why it is declining. Firstly, I told you that, firstly, it, it is upward rising. The reason is that in the beginning, the demand will be more because the supply is very low, uh, limited. First, he is selling only one unit. At that time, the price will be very high. So, naturally, his revenue will also be very high. But gradually, he is increasing his output. He is selling more and more product. As a result, the supply will be increased. When the supply is increased, it is only natural that the price will come down. He will be forced to sell that product at a lower price. So, uh, his total revenue will be declined. Then after this stage, dropping downward. As, uh, for example, after this stage, the total revenue will be declined. And finally, again, if he is producing 11 or 20 units, what will happen? He may face a negative. Negative. He will not get profit. The total revenue will be declined and it will come to the negative point. So we can say that uh, in the case of monopolies, in the beginning, he will get more and more profit, more and more revenue, that gradually his profit will be declined. If he is producing more and more commodities, his profit will be declined. So only that thing, again I am saying all these things, today what I told you, first monopoly, I told monopoly is the negation of competition, I told you. That means there is no other seller, only the entire product comes from a single seller or producer. The entire, the entire product in the market, comes from a single seller or producer. So we can say that it is a single, mono means a single. It, is, it comes from a single seller or producer. That is called as monopolist. Monopolist may be either private monopoly or government monopoly. For example, of this government monopoly, electricity, railway, atomic uh, energy, then defense equipment, defense, uh, water authority, water, all these things are included in government monopoly, government monopoly. But private monopoly also, we can say something, I told you that a, a particular uh, pharmaceutical company is producing uh, some medicine by itself only, only that, uh, that company is producing a particular product, we can say that is the monopoly of that product or that medicine. So it is a private, oh. monopoly, private monopoly. Then what are the main features I told you? Uh, yesterday I told you what are the main features of perfect competition. Today I am saying, uh, today I am explaining what are the features of monopoly. There is only one seller. There is only one seller. No other alternative. Only single seller or producer in the market. Next, there is no cost substitute. The entire product comes from a single producer or seller in the market. So he is able to fix any price which he likes. There is no cost substitute for his product. The entire product comes from a single seller or producer. Third one is that he is a price maker. He can fix any price which he likes. Whatever may be the price, he can fix any price which he likes. So he is a price maker, but not a price taker. Why we are saying he is not a price taker? Because even though he is fixing a high price, he has complete right, he has complete power to fix a high price for his product. But at the same time, that product should be consumed by the people or consumers. The consumer is the ultimate power. Or consumer is the authority to fix or to take that uh, product. Consumer is the ultimate taking authority. So, monopolist is a price maker, not a price taker. Next one is that, there is no free entry, I told you. 
uh, uh, if a particular entrepreneur or if a particular uh, businessman is coming to start electricity, it is not, he cannot come. There is great uh, restriction or is not allowed. It is under government monopoly only. There is no entry. Next one is that uh, nature of demand curve. The demand curve faced by the monopolist is a downward sloping curve. Why it is a downward sloping curve? It means that the and the monopoly, the demand uh, the demand curve is inversely related to price. It is related inversely related to price. So it is a downward sloping curve. It falls from left to right. If the price is very high, the quantity demanded will be low and vice versa. If the price is very low, the quantity demanded will be the, if the price is very low, the quantity demanded will be very high. If the price is very high, the quantity demanded will be very low. So, its demand curve is a downward sloping curve. It falls from left to right. That is another nature. Next one is that the monopolist is well aware, is quite aware, aware about the conditions of the market. He knows how much he can produce, how much he can uh, sell in the market, what will be the price, etc. What is the demand condition, etc. Is quite aware. Next one is that price discrimination can be followed. I told you uh, an example government, under government monopoly. If the government is charging a low rate from the uh, common people for the purpose of electric, for the domestic purpose of electricity, suppose the government is charging only a low rate for the dom domestic purpose of electricity, but at the same time, the government is charging higher rate for the usage of electricity for production or for factory. It is called a discrimination. Two types of charges are made. It is called a discrimination. So the monopolist can charge either discriminatory price or a uniform price. We cannot say anything. So it is existing. Next one is that, the next, the next thing is that the demand curve is a downward sloping curve, I told you. So all this it is. Next one, what is the market demand? The summation of the individual, all the summation of the individual. We are adding the demand curve of individuals. After, some, after the summation of individual demand curve, after the summation of individual demand, we will get a market demand. We can get a market demand only after the summation of individual demand. That is the a nature of this monopoly. Next, next, last word, I told you that we can, I have already drawn a schedule in the market, a schedule of total revenue, average revenue and uh, margin revenue. Based on that thing, I have already drawn a graph here. Total revenue curve is this. It is firstly, it is upward rising curve, then gradually it is declining, downward sloping curve. In this the graph, in the OX axis, we have taken output and in the OY axis, we have taken average revenue, marginal revenue and total revenue. In the beginning or the initial stage, it is an upward rising curve. But gradually, it is declining. Total revenue is declining. The reason is that when the production is increased, when the output is increased, you will not get high profit. Its uh, revenue will be declined. So, monopoly main features, everything I have already explained. Uh, so, this uh, monopoly uh, chapter, it is already finished. You will get notes after a few days. If you have, if you have any doubt, you can make comments. So, I am finishing. Uh, thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.